with uh, Iris Maganwai is Rowan, and uh, I was uh, spending this morning listening to the go-betweens, um, in between taking up some of the uh, news bits from YouTube from the uh, last couple of days. I don't know why, I've just not been in the mood for watching um, YouTube videos this last couple of days for a number of reasons, let's be honest. Um, but, uh, but yeah, and then last night I was kind of caught between, hmm, let's see, do I want to watch um some of the videos that have been um haunting me and feeling more and more like work <laughs> uh, the more um i put off watching them or do i want to um watch lost boys and lost boys won out at some point last night so that's what i did i watched lost boys so um i put in like i don't know a queue of videos that i'm not especially married to watching the whole way through so um if i neglected to hit like or comment on not like you can see which ones you know like my watch history or anything not like that's public or anything but i don't know i feel like somehow some people i genuinely do care about who I watch enough of, like they can sense it maybe, that maybe I, um, it, it was technically in my watch history, which is private, but somehow you can sense it anyway, and, um, and then what happens is, um, I, um, I did things, um, but, you know, since I failed to hit the like or subscribe or anything, or, I've already subscribed, so since I failed to hit the like or, um, or comment or, um, add it to a playlist or something, I don't know, I feel like you can sense that and might become upset with I grew up Catholic, so even when it makes no sense, somehow, like, everything wrong with the world is my fault, so that's, um, and I'm not the only person I know who grew up Catholic who still deals with this, even though we know logically this is not a thing we have to worry about, um, but, uh, but yeah, I mean, I didn't stop crossing myself under every stressful moment until I was almost 30, which was almost 10 years ago, and, um, and my birthday is on Monday, but that's not my 40th. So I did have my first 40th birthday party a couple of years ago. <laughs> Why? Because I reserve the right to mess with people about my age. Um, but yeah, there are a few videos that are technically higher up in my unwatched queue, but I really wanted to watch them, so um, those did not get added to my um, last night's queue, just to bump things up and therefore feel like I have less things to accomplish before I get to the ones that I want to watch, you know? So, um... So then what happened? So, today is the day I am going to see Tim Capello performing live at Leland Shitty Club <laughs> in what was known through most of the 80s and 90s as the Ramada Hotel. It has now since been um, renamed back to the Leland, which I think was the original name. Oh, wait. I know. I, I know it was originally the Leland Hotel, and now it's just called the Leland because the um, the hotel aspect of it is now um, zoned as single room occupancy um, apartments, aka welfare hotel. Um, I used to live in one of those outside Gary, Indiana, and when I got there, I was like, wait, this is what people call Scary Gary? This is almost like the nice part of Toledo when I was growing up there. Um, well, okay, toward the end of the 80s, and then, like, it was like every time I went back for one reason or another, it seemed to be getting a little bit more and a little bit more on the, uh, not so, <laughs> not so cute side. And, but I don't know if that was genuinely... Um, something that I missed when I was a little kid, or if it was, you know, something that was indeed happening. So, I mean, you know, we all, when we're children, we think that where we grew up was normal, and it takes being, like, even if nothing has changed, like, sometimes you can be away for a few years, and then come back, and it's kind of a shock to the system, um, when we're processing that this is where we grew up, so we're, we're, so a lot of times people think, what the hell happened to this place? But then when you go and look up, um, historical photos from about the time you were growing up, even before you were growing up, y you get hit with the reality of like, no, no, it was always like this. I'm not sure. I'm still not so sure about Toledo. Whether, especially the neighborhood where I grew up, whether it was always like it is now, just, um, well, again, I, don't, I know it definitely was not always like it is now, because when I grew up there, it was still referred to, I think it's still officially known as the Polish Village neighborhood, much like Corktown in Detroit, you know, is like, it's historically an Irish neighborhood, but uh, then white flight and shit happens, and it's now a predominantly black neighborhood, though there's been various attempts to remind the city that this is an historically Irish neighborhood. Um, so yeah, like, you know, the neighborhood where I grew up in Toledo was known as the Polish Village. It's still known as the Polish Village. It's a historically Polish neighborhood, like much of Ohio, but <laughs> that's another story for another time. So, um, yeah, Ohio. So I'm not, I know it, 
is a lot more African Americanized um, than it was in the earliest part of the 80s. But I do remember um, my mother going off on neighbors about like, you know, <laughs> yeah, I don't know what the hell you're complaining about, you know, the blacks. Like, and she would put it in dick quotes. <laughs> like, I think she did that before it like hit SNL and every, and everybody started doing it. Um, that Saturday Night Live sketch. Oh god, it was a. Uh, I think I know David Spade was one of the characters in that. I forget who the other person was, but it was a. Uh, it was one of the. Um, it was one of the women in the cast. But yeah, I don't remember who the other person was. Um, I do remember she was taller than David Spade. Then again, he's about five foot five, so it's easy enough to find actresses taller than him, especially when they're in heels. But that's another story for another time. So yeah, like she's just like I don't know what you're going on about the blacks. Like they were like, like Mr. Johnson and his granddaughter have been living here since before we moved in, and um, and yeah, his his daughter you know ha um, lives down the street you know after she got out of the halfway house and. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, and uh, oh yeah, and then there's that, and then there's that old woman, like you know, just just down on the other side of the block, um, right across, you know, uh, and across the street, who's had the cockapoo. She's been here forever, so I don't know what you're complaining about. All the blacks moving in because they've been here. <laughs> but yeah, that's uh, that's that's my mother. And there's a reason. <laughs> there's a reason I have my personality. Like, you know, I I'm sure some people want to blame the uh, the um, what's it called, the uh, ADHD neurodivergence on my personality. But the reality is, is I, I think even without that, I'd still be so much like I currently am. So, let's see. First, I wrap my ankle. Now, I've got, like, all of two, maybe three pairs. Hey, I did wrap it in the right direction. Maybe three pairs of shoes. Ow, damn it. Maybe three pairs of shoes I can wear with this. And I'm probably going to have to rewrap it as I'm getting dressed. So, the, um, the whole thing. So... I was watching Lost Boys last night. In fact, I watched Lost Boys twice last night. Once with the French language dub, which, if you haven't seen it with the French language dub, I highly recommend it. In fact, the other movie I highly recommend watching with the French language dub, which is specified on my DVD edition um, as, a, as a Quebecois um, dialect, which I know that there's a lot of people from Quebec who don't really regard it as, you know, Quebecois. And I know this because I was internet friends with somebody who um, used to rant about that and how, you know, it's just like Quebec French and they sort of, not like explicitly reject, but it's like they, uh, uh, it's this whole thing where it's like, um, the, uh, the French Canadian ethnic groups are kind of racialized, not in the same way that, um, you know, it's, it's obviously like a different kind of racialization than, um, black v. white ethnic groups and so on, but, um, there's this, there's a sort of weirdness about how, um, French Canadian ethnic groups which would be, uh, Quebec, um, the Acadians, and my, uh, my, my, my friend slash best ex, um, Scott, his mother's side has some um, Acadian ancestry, uh, and she is distantly but traceably related to Alice Cooper. His, uh, his original surname is, uh, as, a uh, Fernier, F-U-R-N-I-E-R, and her maiden name is Fournier, F-O-U-R-N-I-E-R. I, I, I'm probably messed up the spelling just a little bit and for one of them or the other, but... Um, so yeah, uh, his, his French side is from the Huguenots, uh, which were a Protestant ethnic group in, uh, in, the east, in the east of France. And her side stayed Catholic <laughs> during that whole period. So it's one of those like like interfamily feudal kind of things. So yeah, they're they're distantly but traceably cousins. So that's ah uh, but I did meet one of his groupies spawn <laughs> when, uh, <laughs> when I lived out in LA. Oh my god, this th th that that man, he looks so much like Alice Cooper. He says one time he uh he went to go see a concert in the eighties when he was um, you know, as in the, um, a friend of a friend. So he was like 16, 17, wasn't even completely sure how he got backstage. But, uh, you know, he, uh, he ends up getting backstage with the, um, you know, and hanging out with the band. And he says it was pretty much like on, you know, same like personality he has in his cameo on Wayne's World, where, uh, <laughs> you know, he's just like, oh, yeah, yeah, cool. Just, like, chill out, hang with us. And... Uh, and so he says, hey, um, I have, like, my mother 
I, I just want you to know I'm not trying to get any money out of you or anything, and I just, I just really wanted to meet you because my mother says that you're my father, and, you know, according to, um, this friend of a friend, um, uh, Cooper takes, you know, just, like, kind of looks him up and down, is like, oh yeah, I believe that. <laughs> It's like, where was I going with this? I was going somewhere with, um, um, okay, Fournier, Fournier, um, Huguenots v. Catholics, uh, racialization of French Canadian. Oh, right, um, Pretty in Pink. Pretty in Pink is another one that you really have to watch at least once ever in your life with the French language dub. And I say this because... It just adds a whole other level of experience to the film, and I know that probably sounds a little on the corny side, which it is, but it is it is something to be had. It is definitely an experience that you will not forget. It turns what was, and still is, um, you know, a corny, you know, teen romance um, that kind of addresses, but then immediately shoves to the side the whole um, deal with classism and everything, and, yeah, I'll bring this eyebrows, um, uh, I'm going to be doing my makeup, <coughs> probably on the train, if not on the train, then right before I get into Shitty Club, after I get there, so let's see, makeup that I'm going to be, um, putting to my face, when I get to Detroit, if not at least some of it on the way there, and this is, this is automatically turn itself off. Oh wait, I've got a clock here. Ugh. Okay, so it's about 10 after 3. Okay, so I do want to leave a little bit earlier. Uh, in theory, I have until 5 to leave and still have sufficient time to, um, oh hey, okay. And still have sufficient time to uh, um, get to the train station. So yeah, I do, in theory, have about two hours and 45 minutes thereabouts before I really need to leave from here for uh, the Amtrak station. But, as was the deal yesterday, there is Art Fair! and art fair traffic, and so, um, leaving early is best. Uh, in fact, I ideally do not want to leave any later than four, so, um, in fact, ideally I would like to leave in about 20 minutes. So, this is what I plan on wearing to the concert. Um, one of my default looks lately has just been, like, a long skirt, usually with some kind of fanciness to it, and I like that this has some sequins on it, and also this little crocheted lace trim. Um, so, let us pack this up into my backpack, because, uh, I... Don't know. Like, while the uh, the bus drivers for the local city bus are fairly tolerant of my eccentricities, uh, I do not know how um, how tolerant the uh, the um, the Amtrak staff will be. I was talking about my eccentricities on the bus, so it is not uncommon for me on a Monday night, or even just a day I'm going out busking, uh, to wear, um, just like an open top of some variety or another, and, <laughs> uh, so this is also a thing that I'm wearing, which is just like this long, um, crocheted lace, uh, not properly a caftan, just because the way it is styled is so much different from um, more traditional caftan styles. And I said more, so it's like, it doesn't have to be like ultra traditionally caftan-y, but it's, it's different enough that 
I'll like often refer to that style of um, jacket as like a pinois. So, um, so then what happens is, um, so yeah, this is just, and I just, I don't know, I often just wear these as a top when I'm going out, uh, clubbing or busking, if that's what I want to wear for it. But like I said, I don't know how Amtrak staff will react to a tiny fairy boy going to Detroit um, with wearing just this and a skirt with his open chesties that he'll twist off. But just because I'm an eccentric weirdo and... So, uh, so yeah, um, with the exception of my velvet boots, this is just, uh, this is just gonna be, uh, I'm going, I'm leaving in my, uh, bedroom witch t-shirt and a pair of jeans, and I'm going to go look for the pair of jeans right now. The, uh, the vinyl is out, obviously, or presumably obviously, but I forgot that this, <laughs> that when I bought this, it was still sealed, and I didn't take the, um, 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 I didn't take the plastic completely off of it, but, so if you haven't seen my Twitter meltdown, well, I don't know, I'm using meltdown pretty loosely because I'm kind of pissy right now, so... It seems every time I want to take the train to a concert, I, either in Detroit or about, yeah, about 10 years, no, 11 years ago, because I remember it was, um, no, was it 11 or 12? I forget. I'm now brain farting whether my chest surgery was in 20 odd 7 or 20 odd 8, but, um, so. And it was going to be like, I was going to like have a big celebratory, um, last, uh, weekend, bef you know, that I was able to drink, uh, before surgery, which was 10 days later. Um, I, uh, I went to, uh, the Mod Chicago Weekender, which is no more just because, uh, my friend Eric, who does it, uh, well, did it, he was getting burnout. Nobody else local was willing to, um, take it on for him instead, uh, just because, you know, they know him, they're local, they know him, they see what he goes through every year trying to get this shit together, um, and there wasn't anybody he knew from just outside the area that he knew well enough to trust to be able to take it over should they have been interested, so, uh, but yeah, uh, this was not the last one that I, oh wait, no, 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 the last one was the next year. Um, so yeah, that year, like I said, it was the year, um, where it was like just before my surgery, just like a week and a half before my surgery, I decided to go out a day earlier because like I even like went through the whole arduous process of, um, of, uh, um, transferring my ticket, like exchanging it for one day earlier so I could see the fall playing in Chicago at a different venue literally the day before. So I figured, oh my gosh, this is going to be like the greatest pre-surgery weekend. Uh, but it was no more because that was stopped up by five hour, by a good five hours. The first delay was because a dump truck stalled on the tracks and the train couldn't really stop in time. You know, uh, it was one of those freak accidents that nobody you know, that is like so I'm actually surprised I didn't see anything on the uh, in the local newspapers about it but that's another story for I don't know maybe there is something about it because it was like uh, just outside Jackson and so the train collided with the dump truck that stalled on the tracks so that stopped us up by a good hour and a half and then we go further and then there's like an electrical storm so we have to slow the train to i think it was 20 miles an hour by uh federal law and then like maybe 10 minutes after we're able to resume normal speeds again there is a tree on the track and so a track crew has to come out and um and basically cut up this gigantic tree that had fallen onto the tracks so they had to cut it up with chainsaws. This stopped us up by uh, combined another three hours. I was so goddamn late that 
even if I just shoved all of my stuff into an Amtrak locker and got on the first bus and, you know, like after, or, oh shit. Well, my friend Sean, I was going to be staying at his place. I also could have given my shit to him and been like, hey, I'm going to the concert. It's like, if I had done that, I might have gotten there with like maybe 10 minutes left of the fall set. That is how late I got there that, that year. And then last year, uh, around October, uh, I don't know if you saw, but there is another, like, my, it's titled My Thwarted Concert Vlog. It's about October of 2018, and I was going to see my friend, uh, The Bedroom Witch, uh, coming out from Oakland, and she was on tour with a couple other people, um, one of whom I kind of was familiar enough with, but that was starting so goddamn early, and plus the, uh, the little... Um, group that was putting on this um, concert was pulling that corny ass shit of, you know, that wasn't even cute in the 90s, but at least in the 90s there was a reason people were doing it. It was like, you know, underground raves which were usually at a squat like, you know, like, like some kind of abandoned factory or closed down factory anyway, but you still had guards patrolling it during most hours. So, you know, like this was, this was you know, like but this was nothing like that. Like I said, in the 90s when those underground raves at squats were far more common, at least it was necessary, right? At least it was necessary, but it wasn't at all cute. I'd been to a couple of those in London, and it, it wasn't even cute then. But this is a situation where the uh, the organizers for this show, like, th this was a legit situation where they had things booked well in advance with... Uh, the venue, which was a church, and it's clear, it was clear that they, that this was done, you know, like, with the blessing of the venue, made the face, uh, no, Instagram post about, like, through the secret venue, which isn't even, ha we're not gonna announce it until day of, and I'm like, okay, first off, that ain't cute, um, secondly, um, it wasn't even cute in the 90s. Secondly, I'm disabled and I need to plan my day accordingly. So if I'm going to this, uh, I need to know about it at least 48 hours in advance so I can plan accordingly. Uh, so yeah, the uh, the organizer eventually broke down and understood, oh yeah, I guess disabled people are a thing that exist. So yeah, um, I didn't know the venue, but by the time... But the train, the train to Detroit, and this was only just to Detroit, not even to Chicago, like the other one. Uh, so just the train to Detroit, that was delayed so hard. At some point, I just like I just gave up. I'm just like, I don't know what order this is because the organizer thinks this is cute. Um, you know, whereas at least with most concerts, you have a rough idea of when the main act is going on, or like. Uh, if it's some, one of these things where it's just, like, you know, there is no, you know, main act, like, socially speaking, but, um, you know, you're coming to see, you know, at the very least, these two who are coming out from Oakland, and then a local act, like, you'd expect, but no, no, like, we had no idea when anything was going on. My friend didn't even have any idea what was going on until, literally, they got there. And by the time they got there and were in any position to tell me what was going on and what order everything would be in, I'd already gotten my ticket refunded and was on the bus, like the last bus back home because I'm just like, I can't do this. If I go there like now, I might miss it um, or something. So at the very least, the train is due in about 15 to 20 minutes or so we've been told because uh, the train that was holding us up um, was coming from a single track station. And when that happens, that means every, every other train that is dependent on that station is going to be held up as well, so, you know, because there's only one track to do everything around. Um, this is also technically a single track station. Um, you know, there's like the one spare track if, you know, if necessary. Actually, no. No, I'm looking at shit right now, and that track has long been pulled. Son of a bitch! This is a total single track station now. We don't even have the auxiliary track here. What the shit? This is new. This is very recent. I am... Oh, gosh. Can I turn this around? No, I can't turn this around. But, like, see, like, okay, like, I grew up, like, my, my grandfather uh, worked with the, uh, the rail in Toledo. You can see artifacts. 
because of where the track used to be over there. Like you can see, you can see artifacts where tracks used to be, and I recognize so many artifacts of where train tracks used to be. Like I figured it out on my own that there used to be an express train between downtown Ann Arbor and downtown Ypsilanti. I figured this out before I even had this verified by uh, historical society museum stuff that I've worked with since I've lived here off and on. Uh, but yeah, so I, I recognize like where tracks used to be <laughs> because of my grandfather on my mother's side. But yeah, so um, looking at this, it looks like, I'm hoping, I'm hoping that the, um, that the train to Detroit is coming in another 10, maybe 15 minutes. That would be nice. That would be very nice. Um, either way, even if it's another 20, 25 minutes, I still have just enough time when the train gets there uh, to the Detroit Amtrak station to hop on a bus, a, a Detroit city bus, assuming it's actually working for a change. But I have just enough time to hop on a Detroit city bus to get to Shitty Club and everything. So yeah, I've, I've, been, at, I've been at the Amtrak station since about 10 to 6. It's now, it is now almost 10. I'm, I'm not happy, but like I said, at, at, at least I should be able to get there with plenty of time before Tim Capello takes the stage. Uh, so yeah, that's where this segment is going. And you know, I've had a shitty birthday weekend almost every year since I've been back in Ypsilanti. And I may be starting to think, like, maybe it wasn't Isaac who cursed my ankle two years ago. Uh, maybe it's just living in this area. But then again, the whole ankle thing, that... I only avoided that when... Uh, I only avoided spraining my ankle every year during the three and a half years I lived in Lansing. Whereas, um, before I moved back to... Uh, Michigan. It happened in. Uh, it happened in Pasadena. It happened in. Uh, no, no, because that year. Well, technically, I was visiting in Salt Lake City, but it was the year I was living in California. Um, during the couple months I was living with Byron in Pasadena. Um, so yeah, it happened like when I was living in California, uh, though visiting Chicago. It happened when I was living in Virginia. Uh, I believe it happened when I was living in Chicago as well, and yeah, yeah, I'm pretty sure uh, my friend Catherine can confirm. It also happened when I was living with her and her ex-husband, well, ex now, uh, her and her ex-husband in Cadillac, Michigan. So, um, I want to say um, it did not happen my first year in Ann Arbor. Uh, but it did happen when I moved in with Scott in Rochester Hills. But yeah, like almost every year since 1999, I've sprained my ankle, usually uh, the left one. Uh, oh. Okay. Okay. Well. Okay. Well, he's saying within 15 minutes, so could be as few as 10. Cross your fingers for me, because it's been three minutes since. I last updated. So, yeah, that is what's going on right now. Hopefully, shit saves when I hit stop. So, all right. Hopefully, 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 I get to the concert in time. Take care. Detroit, you gotta make some more noise than that. Who's ready to see Tim Capella out there? That's what I'm talking about. Come on up.
64 years old this year. Yeah, my mother's and old. I gotta tell you something. I didn't have to dig to find this one. This was one of my favorites when I was, oh my gosh, a teenager. We'll see. You guys tell me after it's over if anybody knows. Plus, I took it, like I said, I love taking tunes that I love, twisting them around a little bit. And I tell you what, even if you don't know this one, this is one of the great great Bob Dylan songs of all time, and for all you musicians out there, Woo! this is actually a 22 bar blues. Oh my gosh. All right, you don't know it yet. Uh-huh. Do you know it? Well, God said it in the head. Give me a son, ain't say man with the good thing on. God say no, ain't say what? God said you can do what you want, baby, but the next time you see me coming, you better run. <laughs> God, that black boy. So wait, you let me walk this kid in there. God say I'm power 61. Why don't you do like a Junior Walker song or do like a saxophone song? I said, man, I got this song. What do you think about it? And he said, hey, I like that. So I figure, what the hell? If Ringo likes it, it can't be that bad, right? All right, let's do it. We can like this. We can like that. Guess I just wiggle out and power up now. Come on now. Man, 
just got home. I did my makeup on the train getting in. So I got there so late that I was not trusting the ability to take a bus from Amtrak to um, the Leland. Uh, so yeah, rather than uh, take my chances with a bus, uh, a friend, um, thank you very much, sent me a little bit of birthday money um, to, to, uh, to call a Lyft driver. And so there was the first Lyft driver. It's because, so, okay, I usually just use the transit app. I've, I've disabled Google Maps on my phone because I have no reason to run both. Uh, especially since uh, the transit app also uses Google Maps for their, um, you know, for their maps. Uh, it just uh, pulls in the, um, the what's it called, the, um, the, the transit schedules for various cities and whatnot. I'm using Lyft from the transit app in Detroit, at the Detroit Amtrak station, and so uh, but every time I click to confirm, uh, to confirm ride, it crashed on me. So I had no idea if it was actually, uh, registering the, uh, ride confirmation or not. So the first Lyft driver who pulls up, I asked this guy three times if he's going to, uh, to the Leland Hotel at Cass and Bagley. Um, at, at a, you know, and, and he assures me, he assures me that he, that, that he is, I guess, and then, um, tells me to, you know, just get in the car, and so we were going, we were like halfway in the other direction, and it's been a while since I've been to Detroit, so I didn't quite notice that at first, but then he asks me, oh, wait, where, where is this place again you're going? And he actually gave the name of the place, uh, but I've, forgotten it because I got very livid very fast and I uh and I said that is not anywhere near where I'm going I'm going to the Leland at Cass and Bagley like it, it is spitting distance from the MGM Grand Casino like seriously like how how was this difficult for you to figure out uh before telling me to get in the car because, you know, like, you were there and, you know, at that point, I was just like, ah, uh, even though I, I don't know, but yeah, so he turned right back around, dropped me off back at the Amtrak station, and then the, uh, then the, then the driver that, oh god, so just because of, um, of what, uh, just because it kept crashing the transit app, I 
basically had to download the Lyft app onto my phone, which I was doing from data because, uh, because what? Because, uh, even though there was theoretically Wi-Fi at the Amtrak station in Detroit, it was not working. So, so yeah, I, uh, so yeah, I, I, I download the Lyft app, I finally confirm a ride after, you know, all these seven points of identity verification that you do when you re-download the app for, like, maybe the third time in your whole life you've ever used this thing, so... So then what happens? I, uh, uh, that driver, who the app told me was three minutes away, uh, took about ten minutes to get there, and what, according to the app, was maybe a seven-minute drive, he took nearly fifteen to get there. But yeah, yeah, I, uh, and, yeah, I did tip him, like, a dollar, which base, you know, which was, like, just a little bit under 10% of... Son of a bitch. It's too late for me to go get my goddamn birthday cookie from Insomnia. Son of a bitch. Because my birthday weekend just keeps getting better, don't it? Uh, this has been... This has been, an, this has been a persistent thing since I've moved back to the Epsi area, is... I, I am not allowed to have a good birthday weekend because uh, Thursday I sprained my ankle um, between picking up my mail and going to game night and then yesterday uh, Friday I spent um, I spent part of my day in urgent care uh, another significant part at Kroger and then when I thought to myself okay maybe I could go do some busking the rain just does not want to get any lighter, and I was just like, you know what, I got a, I got a 120 year old accordion, I don't want this thing getting wet, so, whatever, and then of course today, with my train to Detroit being three hours late, oh, and so I did get a ride back with a new friend, uh, Emily, and she and a couple other people that she was uh, carpooling with were also from Ypsilanti. So uh, she almost left without me. <laughs> um, they, uh, they stopped at a Konima Island uh, restaurant on 8 Mile shortly after the concert. And then she messaged me back and says, oh my gosh, we've, we've failed you if you don't have a ride back. Um, and you don't want to wait until 6.30 in the a.m. to get, uh, get the scheduled Amtrak back to Ann Arbor. We can swing right back around. It'll, you know. So, that was nice. That was nice. She did, she did come back for me, which is great. And one of her, um, car friends gave me a drug that... I'm not going to be using right now, but happy birthday, right? That's nice, and no, I'm not telling you what it is, but it is not marijuana, because pot just doesn't really do anything for me. Uh, like, on occasion, like maybe one out of every four times I've, I've, uh, I've had a hit or two off somebody else's joint, it's, it's been like, like, like I'll get kind of you know, relaxed and goofy, but like I said, it's like maybe 25% of the reefers I've smoked, so it's like, I don't know, it's not really worth it to me. It's not cannabis, it's just not worth it to me. Um, you know, my, my whole thing is just like, people spend money on this? I don't know. Well, oh, that was more like my impression of cocaine, but it's not cocaine, okay? It is something that I would totally spend money on again, but you know, you don't need to know all that. So, yeah, that was my big exciting day. On the good side, um, they, uh, kept shifting, uh, Tim Capello's, uh, time he was going on back. So he was initially supposed to go on at 11.30. I did not get anywhere near the, near the Leland, finally, until five minutes to midnight. On the good side, by the time I did get in there, his, uh, his showtime had been shifted to 12.15. So, I did not miss it. 
which is good, which is good. This is a, a thing that finally went right this whole goddamn extended weekend so far, right? Okay, so for some reason my phone did not capture uh, the last part. So, uh, as always, bats and kisses, and I love you all so much, dears, and take care of yourselves, and slan goodbye!